18-year-old Michelle Mercy Jones lived in Fontana, California in 1980. She was considered popular. Michelle helped start a yearbook club at Park West Continuation School before graduating. She also landed a job as Claremont Police Dispatcher. Michelle was last seen by her siblings getting ready for a July 4th get-together. The next morning, on a 5th, her parents started to worry when they noticed she had not returned home after going out the previous evening. They started calling her friends, but no one knew where Michelle was. Her parents then had to report her missing. The police received an anonymous tip about a body in a grapefruit grove at Live Oak and Santa Ana Avenue. They found Michelle's body there. She had been assaulted before her life was taken. Evidence was collected and leads were investigated, but the case went cold. Early in 2020, the case was reopened. DNA samples collected by detectives decades ago were reanalyzed. Detectives also conducted more interviews. Some of Michelle's family members felt that a man by the name of Leonard Nash should be looked into. Leonard was the boyfriend of Michelle's sister Melissa at the time her life was taken in 1980. A DNA sample was then taken from Leonard and it matched the DNA of the suspect that was found at the crime scene. On September 8, 2020, 66-year-old Leonard Nash, who now lives in Las Vegas, was arrested. Melissa had this to say after hearing of the arrest. I'm angry that he got to walk free for 40 freaking years, and my sister was at the start of her life. She never did anything to hurt anyone. On September 19, Michelle's family members gathered around her gravesite. They shared stories and passed around old photos of her. They then released 40 balloons into the air, one for each year they should have had together. Janelle Matthews was born in 1972 in Santa Barbara, California. After she was born, her family moved to Colorado. On the evening of December 20, 1984, 12-year-old Janelle was performing in a holiday concert at Intro West Bank of Denver as a member of the Greeley's Franklin Middle School Choir. Her family was not present at a concert. Her father was at his other daughter's basketball game. Her mom was with Janelle's ill grandfather. At 8.15 p.m., Janelle arrived home. She got a ride home from her friend's father. 15 minutes after arriving home, Janelle answered her phone and took a message for her father. That was the last time anyone spoke to Janelle. Her father arrived home just after 9 p.m. He found a garage door open, but no one inside the house. He got very worried and called the police. They found footprints in the snow, indicating that someone had looked into the windows. There were no signs of a struggle or forced entry. Her disappearance attracted a lot of public interest. President Ronald Reagan even mentioned her once in a speech. Despite this, the case went cold for many, many years. On July 23, 2019, excavators in starting a pipeline found human remains. This was about 15 miles from Janelle's home. The remains were positively identified as being those of Janelle Matthews. The next big development in the case came in October of 2020, when 69-year-old Stephen D. Banky was arrested. He used to live in Colorado, but now lives in Idaho. According to the police, Stephen had long been a person of interest in Janelle's disappearance. He intentionally inserted himself in the investigation many times over the years, claiming to have knowledge of the crime. What he told police grew inconsistent and incriminating over time, and finally led to his arrest. Why Stephen kidnapped Janelle and ended her life is still not known. Nineteen-year-old 
Lorraine Snell lived in Brooklyn, New York in 1980. She worked as a legal secretary. On September 25, 1980, Lorraine's body was found strangled in the back of a station wagon behind a supermarket on Newkirk Avenue in Brooklyn. Investigators were able to collect DNA belonging to a suspect under Lorraine's nails. DNA technology was not really advanced, however, and they had to store it to be used later. They also conducted a lot of interviews with family and friends of Lorraine. Lorraine's cousin had a husband by the name of James Burris. James became a prime suspect after the interviews. James told investigators that he saw Lorraine the night before her body was found. He also told them that he walked her home for a bit because it was raining. The station wagon was behind a supermarket where James worked at a time. The car belonged to James's boss at the supermarket. He later admitted to robbing a cab the same night Lorraine lost her life. James ended up going to prison for robbing the cab. When he was released from jail, he became a preacher. Despite investigators being confident that James was responsible, they never could prove it. By then, early in 2020, James's DNA was positively associated with foreign DNA found under Lorraine's fingernails. James was arrested in March of 2020. Lorraine's mom was 42 years old when her daughter passed away. She turned 82 years old in September. She is relieved to know that the case is now finally solved.